because you'll only have two things to think about at first. You'll have to think about the ball and the racket head. Now, if you're going to play properly, you must have a racket that's the right weight for you, not too heavy or too light, and one that you can grip comfortably. First, let's see just what it is you have to do when on the tennis court. To put it simply, you have to hit the ball over the net into the court on the other side. Of course, Dan was using his hand instead of a racket. If you had to hit a ball over the net using the palm of your hand, you'd also hit it in the same way, about here. To do the same thing with a racket, think of it as giving you a greater reach and a bigger hand. In other words, an extension to your arm. You keep the head of the racket at the same angle as you'd keep your hand if using that. Keeping this angle in mind, here's how to grip the racket. Imagine greeting an old friend and use what is called the shake hands grip. The palm of the hand lies against the back of the handle. Spreading the first finger slightly helps you control the racket head. The racket should be held with the end of the handle just touching the heel of the hand. That is, with the end showing slightly just beyond your little finger. It should be gripped firmly with the wrist braced. Even if you've never played tennis before, it's not difficult to get to the stage of these beginners. We've learned how to hold the racket, and we know we've got to hit the ball across the net. So now, from the back of the court, Dan will show us how to go about it. The place to try to hit the ball is about here. That is, just after the top of the bounce, about waist high. Let's see if it looks very hard to hit the ball at about this height. That didn't look too difficult, so let's see what it's like with the ball coming from the other side in actual play. In every case, the aim was to hit the ball just after the top of the bounce about waist high. It may not be possible every time, but you should always try to hit the ball at the same point too, just after the top of the bounce about waist high. We'll look at this in practice again, but remember, if you're going to hit the ball at the right moment, you must concentrate on it all the time. See how these two young advanced players move quickly into a position where they're able to hit the ball just after the top of the bounce. If you do the same, it'll give you more time and be easier for you to make your stroke unhurriedly. So to make things easier, remember, Hit the ball just after the top of the bounce. Looking at these two again, we can see that they're doing more than merely hitting the ball just after the top of the bounce. Look at the way they're hitting it. Notice the way the racket head sweeps round with a swinging movement. Let's look at this action more closely with Dan. He swings the racket head round. It's a swinging movement that appears to hit right through the ball.
right from the start, try to hit the ball, as Dan shows us slowly, with a smooth, flowing, swinging movement. It's not a jab or a push. It's not a slash or a chop. It's a swinging movement. Here's something to help you understand the kind of movement you want to try to make when you start to play. With the ribbons attached to the racket head, see how they fly out, trailing behind when a swinging stroke is made. But with a pushing stroke, they bunch up on the racket. Watch them again as a ball is hit with the correct action. Of course, you don't want to go onto the court and play with ribbons on your racket. But when you do go to hit the ball, make sure the imaginary ribbons on your racket head are going to fly out behind. In other words, hit the ball just after the top of the bounce swinging your racket head. You'll find it easier to make the swinging movement if you turn sideways in preparation for your stroke. The weight is put onto the back leg and it'll come forward onto the front leg as the racket head swings into the ball, as we shall see. You turn a little sideways, hit the ball after the top of the bounce with a swing of the racket head. If you get yourself quickly into position so as to be able to do this comfortably, basically you'll be doing precisely what the championship players do in action. Look at one of the best players in the world, Ken Rosewall, practicing before a match. In between each stroke, he rests his racket in the other hand. And when you're about to receive a ball, this is the best way to stand. Hold your racket so that the neck rests comfortably in your other hand. Spread your feet a little, about shoulder width, and keep the knees slightly bent and springy. This position of readiness, as it's called, enables you to move quickly off the mark like all good players. Both players here, one receiving a service and the other during play, adopt the same position. Don't think it's showing off to stand properly. After all, we do it in other sports when it's important to be quick off the mark, and we all know just who's going to be left behind when the correct position isn't taken up. To be quick off the mark in getting to the right place for hitting the ball is half the battle in tennis. So adopt this position, alert and ready to spring into action. You've now seen enough to be able to go onto a court and have a go at playing a short rally. That is, keeping the ball in play, hitting it back four or five times in succession, like Dan here. No doubt many of you will have noticed that Dan hit some of those shots backhand, and he hasn't shown us anything about that yet. What is there to learn about? Yes, a backhand. Two things mainly, about the ball and about the racket head. You hit the ball after the top of the bounce, swinging the racket head. Simple, isn't it? It's what we've already learned. But here's a tip to make it a bit easier for you. This is your ordinary forehand grip. For the backhand, move your hand round a little towards the thumb. Ordinary grip. Backhand grip with the palm more on top. It's only a very small movement. At the same time, move your thumb so that it lies diagonally across the back of the handle. Forehand, backhand. With practice, you'll soon be changing your grip automatically at the moment you prepare for your stroke. Don't shy away from the backhand. Remember what we've learned for the forehand. You hit the ball about waist high with a slight upward swing.
Let's have another look at Ken Rosewall practicing his very fine backhand. See how he turns sideways to prepare for his stroke. Note the upward swing of his racket head as he hits through the ball. Finally, Dan is going to show us how, no matter which side the ball comes, on the forehand or the backhand, you can play it equally well by moving quickly into the right position. Well, there we are. Now we know enough to hit the ball to each other over the net. And you can have some fun by seeing just how long you can keep it in play. In the next film, I'll be showing you how to serve. But I hope you won't wait for that before practicing what you've just learned. You can do this on your own or with a partner. You can practice the swing of the racket head on the forehand and backhand. You can practice changing your grip quickly. You can hit the ball up against a wall or practice net. Even advanced players do this all the time. And when you first play with a partner, you'll soon get the feel of the game and really start to enjoy it. <laughs>